Hello? Good morning, everybody, and I welcome you all for the ninth general club meeting of uh, our India chapter for Council for Ayurveda Research. And today's uh, presentation is about uh, uh, how to critically evaluate an article which is based on herbal drug. And uh, today's presenter is uh, esteemed academician Dr. Suvarna Aniruddha Zoshi, madam. She is Associate Professor of Microbiology from BJ Government Medical College, Pune. And uh, she has uh, more than 27 years of experience in uh, academics, as well as she is recipient of uh, a laboratory fellowship of John Hopkins University, USA, as well as UNESCO American Society of Microbiology Award. She has been pivotal in completing more than 10 research projects, which are funded by ICMR and uh, various other funding agencies from national and international scenario. Right now, she is working as in charge in COVID-19 diagnostic laboratory approved by ICMR and with more than 25 international papers and more than 50 presentations on various platforms, she is active with various societies of research and microbiology. Her topic for today is uh, clinical effectiveness of uh, Spatikadi uh, Pratisaran in the management of Shitada that is gingivitis. And uh, this article addresses use of uh, herbal medicine and how uh, that is explained in the article that we are going to see today. Uh, so uh, make sure you are uh, uh, putting your queries in the chat box and we can take those queries at the end of the lecture. So uh, hand it over to Dr. Suvarna Zoshi, ma'am. Uh, thank you for being here, ma'am. And thank you. it's our honor to be uh, yeah, hosting. Thank you, madam, for my introduction. No, no, no. introduction. Uh, go ahead with the presentation. Yes. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, uh, as madam said, uh, I will be discussing uh, the article, the clinical effectiveness of uh, Spatikadi uh, Prathisarana in the management of uh, gingivitis. Uh, while uh, evaluating uh, this article, uh, let me uh, just uh, clear in the beginning, uh, those who, who are the junior faculty or the students, that whenever we are doing uh, such activity or we are reading the any article published in a reputed journal or in a good uh, index journal also, the first thing which you need to keep it in mind that you are not criticizing the pathy, you are not criticizing the author, but you are just criticizing, rather you are evaluating, you are giving your opinion about the study, about the research which is being said or which is being published in that particular article. So you are giving your views about that research only, that research activity only, and nothing has to be taken as a personal or as the pathy related. Okay, so... Uh, with this clear uh, things in your mind, keep this in clearly. And uh, for evaluation of this article, I have used as a standard base, which we usually take it as a consort guidelines for whenever you are doing any clinical trial and Excuse wish to publish. Yes? Uh, Ma'am, I have put it on presentation mode. It is on slide mode, I guess. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, whenever we are uh, going to publish any uh, research which is being done as a clinical trial, uh, we need to follow the standard guidelines for re reporting it. And these are known as uh, consort guidelines, as you are all aware of that. So I have used the uh, extension of that uh, uh, guidelines, which are being, uh, the extension is for the whenever you are using the herbal medicine, medication for the intervention. Okay, so for that, there are separate guidelines and I had used that as a base for evaluating this particular article. Okay, this uh, guidelines, extension guidelines are available in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Okay, it is freely available, so you can go through that. 
so they, uh, all the 20, uh, 15 points they have uh, labeled it as item number one two three four like that so the first uh, number or the first point which we are evaluating is the how is the title and the abstract okay so the title is clinical effectiveness of the spatikadi uh, pratisarana in management of gingivitis okay so what the guideline says whenever you are doing the reporting of any clinical trial, you have to mention in the title itself, it is advisable to mention that how the participants were allocated to the intervention. In, uh, in other words, you have it is better to mention that whether it is a randomly allocated or randomized trial or randomly assigned so that the reader can immediately make out the type of clinical study, okay? The second thing, if it is not in the title, then at least it has to be mentioned in the abstract. It is be better to be mention it in the both title as well as abstract, the participants, how they are being allocated, as well as the herbal medica medicinal products, what is the Latin name, or which, pa and the, which part of the plant is used, and what type of preparation is being used for this study. So all these three things has to be there in the title. So if we see that the guidelines, then what is your opinion about the title? The clinical effectiveness of Spatikadi Pratisarana in the management of gingivitis. They have mentioned about the herbal medicine, the part of the plant which is being used not mentioned, but what is the product powder preparation you can make out by the Pratisarana? And randomization or how they have enrolled a participant has not been mentioned. So that is the lacunae in the title. Okay, so then we'll move on to the abstract. Uh, I hope everybody has this uh, link for this article. So in the beginning, the in the abstract, they have mentioned like uh, about the uh, oral diseases, which has been mentioned in the Sushrut Samhita and what is the shitada and uh, what are the causes for that and the uh, what is the prevalence in the uh, which age group that is what they had mentioned then they had said that they have taken the 30 patients which were selected by after taking their written consent and this uh, study has been done in the ayurveda teaching hospital in sri lanka okay and they have done it in the two groups, which were randomly selected, irrespective of their age, gender, and religion and habitat. Okay, so these two groups, they had made it group A and group B. In one group, they had given this drug under trial, that is Patikadi Prathisarana. And in the group B, they have used the Trifara Prathisarana. Okay, as a local application of the, for the gum. And then they had given the, what are the manifestations or clinical presentations, which they have been uh, considered for inclusion criteria. And uh, sorry, uh, which are they included it as a uh, outcome measurement, the subjective criteria and the objective criteria, which they had been used to assess the effect of therapy that they had mentioned in the abstract. Okay. And they had given their uh, outcome that uh, in the follow-up st uh, study, it has been confirmed that the recurrence rate was significantly lower in the group A than group B. And when they have taken the objective parameters, that is gingival index and gingival bleeding index, then both were statistically significantly reduced uh, by giving either of the treatments, okay. But the recurrence rate was less in the group A compared to the group B, that was their outcome, okay. And they had given the four keywords, Spatikadi, Prathisarana, Shitada, and Marginal Gingivitis. So on this, my comments are, if you see the guidelines that here they had not still mentioned in the abstract whether they are being randomly uh, in the directly in the group they said they are just randomly selected and 
even though they had used the trifala pratisarana they have not used it in the keyword so that they should have been added right so then it would have been a wider coverage to get the access to that article so nowhere they had mentioned whether it is a what kind of a clinical trial it is they just say that the effectiveness they want to measure the second point in uh, what we are looking is the how they had given the introduction or the background or the reasoning rational uh, for which they are being doing done this trial okay so ideally what the guideline says the scientific background or explanation of rational is expected in the introduction it should give the brief statement of reasons for trial with reference to specific herbal medicinal product that is being tested and if applicable whether the new or traditional indications are being investigated okay say for example when they are uh, using this patikadi pratisarana when if it is a known thing as a treatment of choice for gingivitis then why they want to test it is there any other uh, property which they are uh, wanted to test it that also they should have been mentioning it in the introduction or as a background okay so that is what is expected as per the standard guidelines if we see the background or the introduction what is been given in the article then they said that there are about in the ayurvedic medicinal uh, medical science there are uh, about 15 oral diseases periodontal diseases and shitadha is one of that and it is the early stage of periodontal disease and may progress to dantavest or the upakushta state if it is untreated and uh, so what are the under uh, uh, underlying this causes for having this oral disorder that they had mentioned over there and if it is not been treated at early stage then what are the manifestation in a later stage or at a chronic stage that they had mentioned that they may the person may have a suppuration or the gum recession or the tooth mobility or maybe at the end there may be the loss of teeth also okay and what are the factors responsible for cause of this shitadha they had mentioned that it can be the microorganism origin or the calculus formation food impaction or faulty restoration and uh, deficiencies of mineral and vitamins etc certain drug allergies or uh, endocrine dysfunctions or uh, certain chronic conditions uh, malignancies and so on okay and what what are the uh, modality of treatment treatment modalities in a modern uh, days that they had mentioned that scaling polishing root planning and gingivoplasty can be the treatment option but what they have to say that though these are the available thing in uh, ayurved what has been mentioned as a treatment of choice for the shitadha okay so they have given like these are the uh, treatment modalities like you use the pratisarana or that is the rubbing or the blood letting or use a paste or uh, you can do the nasya or you can do the gargling these are the different uh, treatment modalities has been mentioned in ayurveda and out of that they had choose this pratisarana okay now why they have chosen this pratisarana so they have given like because it is a anti inflammatory and anti microbial and has a rejuvenation property they thought like it is more effective in the management of shitadha right and uh, they had mentioned in the introduction itself that it is a herbal powder preparation and uh, how it uh, what is its action and how it help in curing the clinical condition so here even though they had given all these things they had not mentioned the reasoning why they want to do it or what are the aims and objectives in short or what is their research question 
if it is known to have this anti rash uh, anti inflammatory and antimicrobial and rejuvenation property and when it is a known drug then why they don't uh, want to test it in this current clinical trial so only reason what they had given it that ki there is now a trend to have the herbal uh, products rather than the allopathic one because it is thought like it has a less side effects so they want to do this trial to uh, say that this is a proven medication and it can be used as an alternative that's the only reason they had given okay but it can have been they can uh, there is a chance for the author to elaborate more in detail like why they have selected the, these two particular thing whether it is a known a uh, drug of choice for treatment of this particular shitada or gingivitis or it is because of this uh, proper known property they want to try it out whether it can also be used as a uh, uh, treatment modality for the gingivitis that is not been clearly mentioned okay so then when we move on to the material and methods in material and methods the guidelines says like you have to give in details about the participants what intervention you are doing it then how are you going to measure the outcome and how are you going to analyze the outcome by statistical methods okay so what one should write about the participants what are the eligibility criteria on basis of which you are enrolling the participants or included the participants the setting location where the trial is being done that all has to be mentioned then what kind of data one is collecting during this trial that has to be mentioned and if a traditional indication is being tested then the description how traditional theories or concepts were maintained and for example say the participants inclusion criteria should reflect the theories and underlying traditional indications that is what the guideline says the concert guideline says and one more important thing which is being mentioned in the guideline like when you are saying like say 50 or 100 samples or uh, the participants are included the most important that is the item number 7 which they had mentioned in the guideline is the sample size how the sample size was determined that has to be mentioned in the material and methods and whenever applicable give the explanation for interim analysis and stopping rules like when you will stop in, uh, in enrolling the thing and apart from the sample size calculation how these participants are randomized whether the randomization is being done and if it is done how it is being randomized the sequence of allocation can be shown either in the uh, diagrammatic way or you can mention the use method which is used for random allocation sequences in detail any restriction is there blocky block use uh, randomization is used or stratified randomization method is used or lottery method is being used what type of uh, randomization method has been opted that can be mentioned then allocation and concealment that is should that should be mentioned and how it is the implemented who generated the allocation sequence who enroll the participants and who assign participants to the different groups that should be mentioned and if it is a blind uh, blinding is being done then what is the necessity whether or not the participants are being blinded and whether the assessment of the effect of uh, blinding has been done and how you have assessed the success of that blinding has it been evaluated that should be mentioned in the methodology part this is about the participants okay then in the methodology also it is expected that the herbal medication which is being used in a trial as a intervention you should give the they have made it in the guidelines the five parts 4a 4b 4c 4d and if at all the placebo is used then 4e okay so we will see what are the mention in the guidelines that one should write when they are writing the 
clinical trial using herbal medical as a medicine as an intervention. So in the herbal medical uh, medicinal uh, product in 4A, they have said the guideline says that the Latin binomial name and the botanical authority and the family name has to be mentioned with each herbal ingredient. How many are the ingredients that should be mentioned? And for each ingredient, you should give their Latin name and the family name and all. One also should mention the common name. Then the if it is a proprietary item, then the brand name should be given. And if it is an extract name, then that can also be given. And name of the manufacturer if it is available in the market. Whether the product is used is authorized or in other words it is registered or can be used by the in that particular country where the study was conducted okay say so for example uh, i want to do the trial on the uh, metronidazole but i cannot do that metronidazole trial in the us because it is banned over there so that is what they, they are saying like the product which you are using it in the trial should be the one which has been licensed or registered and can be used officially or allowed to use in a patients by that country. Okay, so that has to be there mentioned in the 4A point. The, in the 4B guideline, they have said that the part of the plant which is used should be major, mentioned how that product is used, whether it is a uh, dry powder or it's a weight uh, depression is used or whether it is an extract which is used. If it is an extract, then what uh, material is used about solvent that means it is used, whether it is a ethanol or glycerin or methanol or water, whatever it is that is to be mentioned and in how much percentage that drug concentration or extract is used, whether it is two as to two in one or how it is being done, whether it is 80% ethanol or 90% glycerin is used, whatever is used as a solvent that has to be mentioned. Then how the preparation is used and how it is being authenticated, who has done that authentication and the product detail or the ingredient evaluation has been done by which people or which group or who has done that has to be mentioned as per the guideline 4B. Then in the 4C, what the guideline says that when you are using such herbal medication, then the dosage regimen and the quantity description has to be there. So how much it is being given in dosage, product, duration of administration and the frequency, okay? Then the content. So as a weight or concentration may be given as a range where appropriate or all quantified herbal product constituents per dosage unit can be mentioned. Or whether it is a capsule, then you can say like how much is the content in that. And then for standardized product, the quantity of active constituents per dosage unit in the unit form should be mentioned. Then the qualitative testing should be done uh, mentioned in the guideline as they said it in the 4D. Chemical processes, biological activity, how it is being measured, description of any special testing is being done for that has to be mentioned. So before uh, going to the material and methods, we'll see whether the objectives or specific hypothesis has been mentioned. So in this article, they had not mentioned at all the object, aims and objectives. So directly they land up in the, at the end of the uh, introduction only, they say like, since there is a trend of the new era of using herbal medication, they are want to try this proven drug. Nothing else they have mentioned. Okay, why they want to do the comparison of Trifara with Thaspatikadi, that also they have not mentioned. So the objective should have been clearly mentioned. In the drug preparation, they had given how it has been done. And uh, how in, uh, as expected, it has been given in very much detail. Next, uh, 
uh, ideally they should have mentioned about the participant first but anyway they have done mention about the drug preparation first and then they had mentioned about the inclusion and exclusion criteria so inclusion criteria they had mentioned about the patient presenting with the clinical features of shitada uh, described as per the ayurveda and modern science were included at the age group they had mentioned like the participants of the patients in the between the age group of 16 to uh, 60 years they had included them then using the random sampling technique by lottery method they had done the uh, randomization of the participants in the two groups they have used the lottery method for randomization of the participants in the two group that they had mentioned it in the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria they had given like those who are having any systemic in, uh, conditions or or comorbid conditions like diabetes hypertension rheumatological disorders then they are excluded patient below 16 years of age and above 16 years of age they are being excluded pregnant and lactating women are excluded and patients using any other systemic drugs which may alter the study they are excluded but here they should have mentioned what is the reason for not including the uh, patients below age of 16 and above age of 16 is not clear neither they have just vaguely mentioned that uh, any systemic drugs with if the patients are uh, taken then they are being excluded so which drug is likely to have the interaction with this drug which they are using in gingivitis treatment has not been mentioned then in the sampling method sample size is not mentioned but the sampling technique they had mentioned total 30 participants they have taken and randomly by lottery method they are divided into the two groups so 15 in each group the group a received the pratisara patika uh, churna and group b received the trifala churna both these churna they had used 1 mg in the b honey and they had asked the patients to use it twice a day by massaging on the gum for one month and they had asked the patients to come for the follow up after two months after completing completing the course of treatment that is what they had given it about the patient randomization or participant allocation into the different groups randomization method and about the drug or the herbal intervention and for the assessment of the outcome what they have used which parameters they have used they had mentioned like they have used the subjective parameters as well as objective parameters okay so the subjective parameters which they have mentioned there are six which they had mentioned it in the abstract in the beginning itself and they had uh, said that they are being evaluated before start of treatment or at the baseline and after treatment using 0 to 3 scoring system okay and the objective parameters are the gingival index for which they had used the a standard uh, indexing system and same they have used it for the gingival bleeding index for also they have used the standard indexing system here they have not mentioned that there can be a, a variation subject very vari subjective variation in the scoring system so they should have mentioned here like the same individual who have done the scoring before treatment has done after treatment so that the subjective variation by scoring could have been minimized then what instructions being given to the patients that they had mentioned that all the patients were advised to follow the instructions uh, about the keeping oral hygienic practices that is going to help them in reversal of the oral diseases that has been explained to them then proper brushing method has been explained to them and how many number of times in a day they have to do the brushing of the teeth that they had been mentioned and instructions regarding the food so that is ahar vihar they had mentioned that they are supposed to follow use the 
or consume the fibrous non sticky food and less uh, sweet they are supposed to consume and they have to chew it proper mastication has to be done from both sides of the jaws that they had been told and proper rinsing of mouth after the meal or the consumption of food then they have said that the 1 ml quantity of the 1 gram of churna they had been asked to rub on the uh, taken on the index finger and then apply out on the gingiva and then give a gentle pressure how it is to be used that drug they had mentioned that and then you they have to do the rinsing or mouth rinsing with the lukewarm water so after the treatment they have collected the data and for the data analysis the author has mentioned that they have used the spss statistical uh, statistics uh, package or the software uh, version 16 and they have used the pair t test for comparison between this two group about the effect uh, evaluation for the evaluation of the effect of two treatments okay so if you see this detail methodology which they had mentioned then is there something which they had not uh, they had missed out is that they have just mentioned the uh, they have not mentioned like why the trifala churuna has been used whether usually whenever you are doing any clinical trial it is always with the standard method of treatment and you compare it with the new treatment against that so here they have not mentioned whether the trifalachuruna is the standard method of treatment for gingivitis and against which they have used this particular the pratisar so that they should have been mentioned okay so otherwise the methodology is good very well written as per the guidelines then coming to the results the participants flow they have not uh, they, that uh, they should have been mention in the uh, methodology and recruitment and this we have seen number analyzing outcome measurement that they had mentioned adverse effect it is there so then we see what they had mentioned it in the observation and results so they just said that in the present study majority of patients that is 33% patients were in the age group of 20 16 to 26 years and out of them the 66.6% uh, were the females the maximum patients were reported to use the uh, having this uh, symptoms with less than 1 year of chronicity okay and majority of patients were using the toothbrush as a cleaning device but 56% uh, people were cleaning their teeth with brush only once in a day okay and most of the patients as they say has the vata pitta uh, type of uh, prakruti and the majority of patients were presented with the uh, madhya i don't know what is this uh, thing which they had mentioned and uh, 43% were used having to have the ama formation okay but they have not given the table to explain this what they had seen in their general mention it in the general observation so when there are 15 patients in the a group a and 15 patients in the group b how many uh, 66 point they have mentioned the male female but what they have said it the score 0 to 3 the subjective criteria and all how many of them having the uh, score before treatment 3 2 1 like that they should have given but that they have not given okay and comparative effect of therapy and uh, subjective criteria which they had mentioned so they say that the while considering the p value of group a and group b on the raktastra both group show the significant relief because as per the statistical analysis the p value is less than 0.0.05% uh, okay 
the further analysis proved that the uh, mukha durgun uh, durgunas uh, and danta mansas manasotha significantly reduced and uh, both have the so in other words what they have mentioned is that the subjective criteria were effectively or significantly reduced by both treatments so both treatments are equally good in reducing the subjective criteria okay and here they have shown like the symptoms after uh, treatment with the blue color and symptoms in the group a and symptoms after uh treatment in group b with the red color so absence of bleeding was less in the group b the normal pinkish color gums were seen in both the group after treatment in the equal uh, this thing absence of inflammation was more, uh, less in the group a or the reduction is seen more in group b absence of bad odor was reduction uh, reduction was seen in the group b more but there was no much difference in the group a and group b in the uh, for the uh, absence of spongy gums or the absence of moistness it's almost similar so this is the subjective criteria so in other words there is no statistically significant difference between treatment a and treatment b that they had given it very well when they compare the gingival index in the group a and group b so absence of bleeding mild uh, was shown with the blue color mild bleeding in the red color and the moderate bleeding with the green color okay so in the group a there was a reduction in the mild and moderate and more absence of bleeding was seen in group a after treatment but in group b the moderate bleeding continue that is what they follow it uh, they have seen it in the follow up uh, visit okay but in group a there was no moderate bleeding at all in the follow up so on basis of which they have saying like if you see the gingival bleeding index the group a the uh, participants who received spatikadi prathisarana there is much reduction and recurrence is less after as compared to the tripala chuni and they, when they had done the effective uh, effect of therapy on the gingival bleeding and they have calculated the p value and both have shown the significant difference also so they said it that gingival index was continuous decre decrement in between before treatment to after treatment period okay so from 1.33 it has reduced to 0.47 so it reveals that there the difference in the mean rank value from about two stages before and after the treatment was significantly reduced because and the p value is less than 0.05 similarly the gingival bleeding index also show the significant difference before it was the score was 1.6 uh, 6 and after treatment it was 0.27 okay so that reveals the difference in the mean rank value of the before and after has been significantly reduced as uh, it is denoted by the p value okay same is the in the group b similarly in the group b it has reduced Uh, as uh, in significantly after the treatment as denoted by the p value similarly the gingival bleeding also reduces so while considering the gingival index and gingival bleeding index the spatikadi prathisarana and trifara churana are equally effective in the management of the disease okay so immediately effect if they have seen when they have seen it has been having effect equal effect but in the follow up study they have said that there is a recurrence more in the group b okay so uh, in the discussion what has to be mentioned that we will see that 
interpretation of the results in relation with the study hypothesis has to be mentioned and what are the potential biases and how they are overcome on that okay then uh, whether there is a, how they have done analyzing the doses in relation uh, with the dose uh, treatment and whether it uh, whatever the outcome or the results which they got it whether it can be applicable or whether they can be generalized that has to be mentioned and whether the self care or the self practice is easily uh, uh, can be taken you can be use this herbal medication can be done as a self medication easily available or can be done that should have practice can be mentioned and the overall evidence of the effect of that treatment should be mentioned so the general interpretation of the result in context with the current evidence should be mentioned in the discussion so now we'll see what they had given it in the discussion so the author says that gingivitis can occur at any age group and the epidemiological study shows that the prevalence rate is high among children and adolescent and the majority of patients what they have seen that is 33% were reported in the age group of 16 to 26 year okay that is the early stage of adolescence which predominates having the pitta more favorable to produce this clinical condition that is gingivitis okay according to the pharma pharmacological action of a single ingredient now they have said the single uh, individual ingredient of that preparation they say that it has anti ulcer or antioxidant activity and anti inflammatory hemostatic activity as well as wound healing activity so which has a effect in recurring the or recovering the uh, clinical condition it further states that the paste with water is found to be anti inflammatory anti analgesic and having a wound care, uh, curing and the healing capacity also rather than the uh, and while the powder is a good astringent and dentifies the loose gums and bleeding in the ulceration gum can be reduced and then they had given the reason like how the spatikadi prathisarana must have work on it okay so then they have said that the uh, spatikadi uh, content that mainly the bakula uh, one study they had mentioned like which is known to have the antioxidant action and because it uh, releases the free radical and this free radical scavenging the activity by reducing the faster progression of gingivitis to periodontitis so that is how it helps in preventing the progress rapid progress of the disease and further loss of teeth that is the action of the bakula and other uh, also that alum uh, sulfate and uh, all other ingredients they had given what are the activity or the action probable action of that ingredients in helping the uh, drug to cure the disease so the pres present research findings further proved by the res uh, previous researchers work found that the bakula is a single drug which was used in the uh, shitada is also they have used it as one of the ingredient and they had also found like it is helpful in treatment of this uh, gingivitis it was proved that the bakula is beneficial in the treatment of shitada and according to the ayurveda pharmacodynamics the spitakadi uh, prathisarana uh, the most of the ingredients have the madhur and kashta rasa and has a kapha pitta shamuk action okay while considering the probable mode of action the debridement and the healing action the mechanical pressure exerted on the gingiva in the direction that removes the debris plaque and necrotic tissue and remnants and inflammatory granulation tissue and bacterial colonies too so since they get removed it help in the reduction in the causative organism at the site of disease and that further helps in the recovery so it uh, reveals that the prathisarana has a pseudo inflammatory action reaction and 
pratisarana which act as a a constant irritation to gingival tissue thereby it produces the pseudo inflammatory reaction on tissue and in turn it causes altered permeability of blood capillaries that is what is a proposed effect of pratisarana that is what they mention and due to this altered permeability of the vessels there will be a, a fair atmosphere to active principle of the drug to gain entry into the local vasculature and thus producing the desirable effect okay and then the gingival uh, crevicular fluid inhibits the bacterial diffusion and it has a phagocytic uh, leukocyte specific antibodies and enzyme specific activity Pratisarana also promote the salivation that brings uh, the salmoral saliva and antibacterial effect and helps in cure. And there is an added benefit of honey in the action of uh, pratisarana that helps in clearing the deprivement and anti-inflammatory and antibacterial property. Also, it is a very good healing agent. So that is what only they had mentioned in the discussion so i want to comment on this is that in the discussion they should have given the comparison with the previous study also which mentions the use of either same uh, spatikarvi or uh, prathasarana or any uh, or individual ingredient like they just they had mentioned about the pakula whether they had used it for the gingivitis and how much is the percentage of recurrence or the how much is the effectiveness they have calculated in that study. So similar kind of study, they should have used it to come for the comparison. They have not done that. Neither here also they mention like why the, uh, this Patikadi and Trifachuruna has been compared both. So in the conclusion, they have said, that Spatikadi Pratisarana and Tripalachurana Pratisarana found effective in treating the uh, features such as Akasthama Raktastrav and the Danta Mansa Shodha and Mukha uh, Duranga. Then Spatikadi Pratisarana showed the comparatively significant results, features such as uh, that Danta Dosha and all that has been reduced. And both the formulas were appropriate to cure the disease. The shitada, uh, this is the shitada and the evidence drawn for the from the clinical study and the follow-up period, it has confirmed that the spatikadi prathasarana is more effective than trifada prathasarana in the management of shitada. That are, that, uh, these are their conclusions. So uh, I uh, would like to comment on this is that since there are no objectives, aims and objectives or the research questions or the hypothesis is not been clearly mentioned, neither in the introduction nor separately. It is very difficult to the, for the author to come to any conclusion. So they have just said that it is equally important, uh, effective and Spatikadi is more effective than the Pratisarana, which is already known. So then if they say it like that, then the whole purpose is only vanished. If it is a known thing, they have just proven it again. That is the only thing. So just to prove what is already known is the only reason only uh, for which they have done this study. That is what they have concluded over here. Then uh, references. When, whenever you are writing the references, then you should have seen, you should have followed the proper guidelines or the standard, stand, there are two standard styles, either Vancouver style or the Harvard style. As we all know that here they have used the, they have mentioned the chapters, hmm? but here they have mentioned only chapter number 16. So here I would like to say that whenever you are using the reference uh, chapter in the book, the name of the author of the chapter Surname first and then the initial, then the title of the chapter, then name of the editors, title of the book, place of publication, 
publisher year of publication and the first and last page has to be mentioned that is the standard way of referring, referring any chapter in the book so that standard method of referencing has not been followed over here if you have seen in somewhere they had mentioned only the chapter in somewhere they had mentioned the chapter name as well as pages also so it should not be like that there should there should be a uniformity they should follow the standard method of reporting okay so my comment on this is that they have not referred the uh, reports referring style neither vancouver nor the howard style uh, referencing style they had used no table has been shown to show the age and gender wise distribution in group a and group b neither there is any table or the uh, diagrammatic uh, presentation like how many uh, score wise distribution of these 15 patients and their effect before uh, after the treatment in group a and group b that would have been more have that would have had a more impact if they had given the score wise like before the treatment the score was three and after the treatment the score came to zero so if they have shown it like that then it would have been more effectively presented so that they could have done that and the best thing why they have uh, they want to do this study what is the prevalence of this gingivitis is it increasing what was there in the say last five years, how much was there and recently how much increase in the disease burden that could have also been included in the introduction. So in other words, the importance, the rational, the reasoning why they want to do this study could have been better explained. Okay, so that is all from my side. Uh, and I would like to thank for giving me opportunity to discuss the article with you people. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And it was wonderful presentation as usual. And uh, you have identified a very important aspect here that uh, when we are using herbal medication, the consort has an extension to that. Consort guideline extension can be used. And uh, it especially refers to the herbal formulation. However, I would also like to add one point here that there are IUSART guidelines newly released. Uh, and this is third edition now, I guess. So they are released by CCRS and Ministry of Ayush. So okay. any biological material or herbal material, uh, if you're uh, taking as an intervention, you need to follow that guideline as a default. Like uh, along with this consort, it will be an additional age. But uh, one, one more question from my side, ma'am, that whenever yes. we are putting statistical analysis, mm -hmm. uh, generally what happens is uh, we get it from statistician and, you know, add it into our literature and submit it. But is there any uh, particular guideline or format for statistical, you know, presentation? Uh, can you comment on that? Uh, uh, whenever uh, my comment on the statistics will be that key, uh, you take the help from statistician, that's okay. But uh, you should able to understand the interpretation of those statistical tests. So you are in a better yeah. position rather than the statistician to comment on the interpretation. So even though say, for example, here they have just said like the pair T test. But as I said, if they have done it score wise, they could have put it in a scatter diagram also to show like how effective the spatikadi prathasarana than the tripara. So the effect, yeah. they have done a very good study, but they couldn't present it that well with the help of statistician. The yeah. diagrammatic, uh, they could have done it better way. The table, other, otherwise simple tables, they could have shown it to show the effect of two tri treatment. So because the sample size is less, they should have put more effort in showing the differences in the two treatment with the individual case wise. So it would have been very good for from their point if it is it would have been done like that way. Yeah, yeah, that is very important aspect you have highlighted ma'am. And in fact, uh, uh, now in research or statistics, this syllabus is added into fourth year UG as well as uh, pre-MD just to understand and interpret the findings by statistician. Yes. So, and uh, I always say that the no need to remember any formula, but first try to understand like which kind of test to be done 
so which is being decided by the type of study and then interpretation of the results of that study you should able to say just saying that it is significant because the p value is less than 0.5 doesn't has much sense you should able to interpret further than that yeah yeah so uh, very nice uh, description ma'am if there are any questions from the participant we can take i would like to say one more thing here like uh, i am not from the ayurved faculty but i have chosen mm -hmm. purposely the article from a dentistry also so that we could have seen as a third party on that uh, clinical trial and then yeah. we can have our own comments on that that way so the reason is only that otherwise there are many more uh, this thing and mm -hmm. while writing the referencing style one should make a little more attention for that being a good exactly. article it will have lost their impact because of such small things yeah yeah exactly and in fact uh, many herbal interventions are being used in dentistry even uh, to some extent in others other like uh, ayush formulations are being used in modern medicine comparative yes. trials so we need to be also aware about where to read uh, relevant yes. data and how we can interpret that article and that's the whole purpose of journal club activity yes. and uh, in uh, today's presentation you have highlighted it beautifully ma'am and i am aware that you are from biochemistry but yes. you have decoded the various aspects of critical evaluation very well with the dentistry article using an ayurvedic formulation even there were some terminology from the ayurveda but uh, yes. you managed it well ma'am and in fact uh, shita is something which is a uh, 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 it comes under shalakya subject so ent yes. and um, this uh, this area of ayurved super specialization super so it's a wonderful yeah so it's a wonderful uh, presentation and you know choice of article uh, thank you so much for giving inputs and uh, our uh, journal club activities are also broadcasted on the facebook and uh, instagram so participants can join there and follow the group so you can also write to uh, uh, consul for ayurveda research and ayurveda research usa at gmail.com if you have any queries please get back to us madam is also uh, uh, very keen on answering all these uh, queries from all the participants so thank you so much once again ma'am i'm no, i'm aware i've been following up uh, with you this presentation since quite a lot but you are so busy and uh, still you manage time for us thank you so much ma'am for giving thank us you so your much. time and inputs so thank you madam that, yeah thank you ma'am thank you and thank you. on that note we'll uh, close this meeting for today ma'am is that okay yes yes thank you so much thank you thank you so much ma'am okay.